Let's practice working with equations. Equations are formed by a set of expressions that are equal to one another. If you do not know the value of something, a variable is used to represent that unknown amount. Then an equation can be used to solve or determine the value of that variable. In this lesson, we're going to focus on one-step equations for a variable. And a one-step equation has the definition of there's only one operation being applied to the variable. So you have only one step in order to solve for that variable. Let's look at a problem together. Sam has saved $210. That is three times the amount that Julia has saved. How much does Julia have saved? Now I underlined two important pieces of information. You know that Sam has $210, and I'm just going to write that without the dollar sign. Now this is three times the amount that Julia has saved. So this equals three times the amount that Julia has saved. Let's let x equal the amount of money that Julia has. And I'm just going to put money Julia. So x equals the amount of money that Julia has saved. So $210 is three times, so you're going to use multiplication, the amount that Julia has. So to do that, 3x, right? Because x is the amount that she has saved. Now you can solve for x. Here you have a multiplication with x, 3 times x. The inverse of multiplication is division. So to isolate x, you're going to divide both sides of this equation by 3. So you're going to have 210 divided by 3, and this is equal to 3x divided by 3. 3x divided by 3, the 3's factor to just 1, or divide, and they have an answer of 1. So you're left with just the variable over here. And now 210 divided by 3 has a quotient of 70. And I'm just going to rewrite this. x equals 70. So this means that Julia has $70 saved. And you know this is correct because you could check this. You know that Sam has 3 times the amount that Julia has. And 3 times 70 equals 210, and that's what Sam has. So you know you got the right answer. Let's try another problem together. Here you have a second problem. And in this problem, you're told that angle A and angle B are complementary angles. And if angle A measures 35 degrees, what is the measure of angle B? So you're trying to solve for angle B. Now the important thing to know is that complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So that means that, and I'm just going to represent it with A and B for right now. A plus B, and this is angle A and angle B, add up to 90 degrees. Now you're already told that angle A has a measure of 35 degrees, so substitute that value in for A. 35 degrees represents the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals 90 degrees. And now we have an expression, or an equation rather, right? On the left side, 35 degrees plus B, and this is equal to 90 degrees. And now we can solve for the measure of angle B. To do that, you have to apply inverse operations to combine the two constant terms here, which is 35 and 90. So if 35 is being added on the left side of the equation, to bring it over across the equal sign, you're going to apply the inverse operation of addition, which is subtraction. So subtract 35 from both sides. And you can include the angle symbol or the degree symbol or not. So 90 degrees. So 35, 35 minus 35 cancels out to 0, so you're left with just b. And on this side, you have 90 minus 35, which has a difference of 55. So the measure of angle B is 55 degrees. Thanks for watching.